The fist-pumping, accomplished feeling of beating a video game speaks for itself, especially if it's pushed you to your limit with its brutally high level of difficulty. But as the internet continues to make abundantly clear, there are some gamers that are just gluttons for punishment and just can't seem to get enough of it. I'm Jess from What Culture, and I have nothing but gobsmacked admiration for these 10 genius ways players beat video games. Number 10. Playing Upside Down – Dark Souls Because the Dark Souls games are apparently not challenging enough, there are plenty of players throughout the years who've decided to up the ante with their own self-imposed challenges, doing things like using rock band controllers, steering wheels, or even controllers made out of bananas. But each of these challenges pales somewhat compared to streamer Lobos Jr., who decided to play through the entirety of the original Dark Souls upside down. No, he didn't suspend himself from the ceiling, though that would have been more entertaining, but rather flipped the game image to create a massive added challenge. Given the obvious disorientation and disruption of established muscle memory caused by the shift. To his credit, Lobos Jr. actually did manage to complete the game across a few livestream sessions, once and for all proving himself to be a true Dark Souls master. Upside down. Number 9. Speedrunning the co-op mode solo, Portal 2 Playing a game in an unconventional way is one thing, but completely betraying the rules of an entire mode is another thing altogether. Whether for the sheer challenge of it, or maybe because they couldn't find anyone else to play with, a small but fiercely committed number of Portal 2 players endeavour to not only beat the game's co-op mode by themselves, but do it as a damn speedrun. In many games designed around co-op play, it's simply physically impossible for a single person to execute the multitude of commands intended for two players. But if you're nimble and creative enough, Portal 2's co-op campaign can indeed be beaten without an extra pair of hands. Aside from a few tricky sections near the end of the game, most of Portal 2's co-op actually doesn't require precise synchronization between players. Even so, the fact that some of these speedrunners have managed to complete it in less than 40 minutes is nothing short of astounding. Number 8. Using a Dance Dance Revolution Pad – Celeste Celeste is not only one of the greatest platformers of recent years, it's also one of the most brutally difficult. But along came streamer Peking Boo, who's not only an extremely skilled Celeste player, but has been able to beat and freaking speedrun the game's famously challenging seaside levels on a Dance Dance Revolution dance mat. The level of coordination required to pull this off basically borders on magic, with each of the mat's buttons bound to the game's more conventional controller layout. Personally, I'm bad at DDR and Celeste, so I cannot even fathom this one. To somehow make it even more impressive, he talks while carrying out the run, while also ensuring to collect every single golden strawberry across the levels, which can only be achieved by completing each stage without dying. All this and he beats the lot within a cool 15 minutes, and I can't overstate the fact that these are levels which mere mortals would suffer thousands of deaths before being able to beat. Number 7. Twitch Plays Pokemon – Pokemon Twitch Plays Pokemon became such a phenomenon that, unlike every other entry on this list, it actually has its own Wikipedia page. In what I personally believe to be one of the best things that's ever happened, in 2014 an anonymous programmer began streaming a modified version of Pokemon Red on Twitch, whereby any user who entered the game's chat could issue commands for it to carry out. The stream's fast-rising popularity, peaking at a staggering 80,000 concurrent viewers, naturally caused progress through the game to be slowed considerably, as contradictory player inputs made even basic navigation a schizophrenic nightmare. But after 16 continuous days of gameplay in which approximately 1.16 million players took part, Twitch did indeed manage to beat the game. Since then, Twitch has hosted numerous other community playthroughs of not only Pokemon games, but, you guessed it, Dark Souls which was beaten in an honestly pretty impressive 43 days. Number 6. Covering the controller in Vaseline – Super Metroid Because Super Metroid apparently wasn't difficult enough for them, streamer Volrath decided to introduce a particularly bizarre wrinkle – slathering their NES controller in Vaseline. What a visual! The idea is that the slippery substance would make executing split-second inputs more difficult, and though the streamer did indeed suffer through a number of incorrect button presses, he still managed to beat the game in just 41 minutes, only 13 minutes shy of the world record. And if you're wondering what happened to Valrath's controller, despite his concerns that it wouldn't recover, it cleaned up just fine. Number 5. Reaching level 110 as a pacifist – World of Warcraft Though World of Warcraft isn't a game you can exactly finish in the traditional sense, hitting the level cap does give you that sense of an intense time investment and triumph. This is perhaps never more true than for the player known as Double Agent, 
Early on in the game, players are asked to choose a faction, Alliance or Horde, but Double Agent decided to simply not do that, opting instead to become a pacifist Pandaren Shaman. Instead of killing enemies to level up, he decided to grind mining and flower picking to ascend through the game's ranks. A feat which after a stonking 8,000 hours of play spread across four years, that's almost a continuous year's worth of days, he did indeed reach level 110. In an interview with PC Gamer, Double Agent said he started his quest out of mere curiosity, but eventually it became a bit of a meditative experience, something he could do while watching Netflix. His feat is so unbelievable that many players in the starting area have even reported him, believing him to have cheated his way to such a high level. Though Blizzard initially tried to encourage Double Agent to pick a faction, they eventually relented. They even included an NPC in the game, Venerable Shaman, in reference to his peaceful efforts. Number 4. Playing Blindfolded – Mike Tyson's Punch-Out Mike Tyson's Punch-Out is one of the most infamously difficult games of all time, but that hasn't stopped some players from trying to play the game blindfolded. The idea of clearing the game's sand site while only using audio as a guide was first floated by speedrunner Sinister One, whose numerous spirited attempts to do so saw him fail at the final boss, Mike Tyson himself. But in 2015, streamer Jack Wedge attempted his own run at Iron Mike, spending a week perfecting his skills while a blizzard trapped him inside his home. Though Tyson is insanely difficult because he veers away from the set attack patterns of the previous fighters, Wedge did eventually manage to pull it off. Number 3. Holding the controller backwards – Armored Core Back in 2012, word started to go around that hardcore Armored Core players had invented a new way of holding the PlayStation controller that would allow them to play the game more intuitively. What would soon become known as the AC grip involved holding the controller back to front and locking it in a sort of claw grip, as would allegedly allow them to more organically control the game's giant mechs. Though at first it was suggested that the post was nothing more than a mere joke about the game's convoluted control scheme, the AC grip has since become an earnest thing for many fans, who have reportedly played through the entire game using the grip. The AC grip's popularity resurged in 2019 when a Japanese player was using it to play Fortnite, and it still remains a common alternate strategy to play Armored Core. Number 2. Almost Never Using the Jump Button – Super Mario 64 Considering that Mario's original moniker was Jumpman, it's safe to say that jumping is pretty much a core part of the platformer. But then that only encourages players to see if they could complete the A button challenge. That is, beating Super Mario 64 without ever making Mario perform a single jump. The crowned king of this challenge is Scott Buchanan, aka Pannenkoek2012, who's taken advantage of every dirty trick in the book in order to progress through the game without jumping. While Buchanan hasn't quite beaten the game yet without the use of the A button, as of 2020, he whittled it down to just 19 presses. That's still a far cry from the several hundred presses that even a skilled player would need to make to get through the game. Number 1. Using a mirror to beat the final boss – Guitar Hero 3 Guitar Hero 3's final boss battle is against Satan himself, or as he's called here, Lou. I really hope I didn't just spoil that for any of you who happen to be halfway through the classic rhythm game from 2007. Players must take part in a guitar battle against Lou while playing through the Charlie Daniels bands The Devil Went Down to Georgia. Simple enough? Not quite. Throughout the battle, Lou will deploy a series of infuriating psych-out tactics, such as obscuring parts of the note highway or, most annoyingly, flipping the highway entirely, as will be massively confusing to even the most skilled Guitar Hero players. While it's dictated by sheer RNG which tricks Lou pulls off, some players eventually realise they could make life easier by simply setting up a mirror next to their TV. And so, if Lou does indeed use the lefty flip, you can just check out the mirror to avoid any confusion. What's new in podcasting? Here's what we love, courtesy of Acast Recommends. The Civil War was the most important event in U.S. history. That's because it decided what kind of nation America would be and whether or not America's promise of justice and liberty for all would come true. And what decided the outcome of the Civil War was its battles. I'm Scott Rank, and I'm the host of the show Key Battles of the Civil War. I'm joined by history professor James Early, and we look at the battles of Gettysburg, Antietam, Fredericksburg, Chancellorsville, and much more. And although the Civil War ended generations ago, with the 160th anniversary of the Battle of Bull Run coming up, in many ways the effects of the war live on to today. Subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. Hey. 
Acast, Acast, Acast recommends. recommends.